Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Very excited because I have realtor to the stars, to the mega wealthy, to people that only have all cash. No one has to get a loan anymore. No. Anyway, it's Josh Flagg. Hello, Josh. Hi. Look at how cute you are there. Yeah, it's like 30 pounds less. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I do. I know. Josh, so. you are on Million Dollar Listing LA. That was the first one of the franchise, right? That is the first. Yeah, well, there's only two. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just couldn't remember. Yes, you guys are the first. Correct. You, I, I've loved the show. Watched it from the beginning. You did not realize that I was a realtor at one time. I did not keep up my license, but I was a Why realtor. Why do people do that? Just keep, just, all I got to do is push the button and because renew it. Because my husband is one, two, and he does renew it. Okay. So it's like if we needed it, we have it. But I finally just halfway through Chelsea lately, I was like, I can't. I don't want to d- deal with this anymore. And I, so I wanted to have the confidence that I could uh, that I didn't need it. But I still love real estate. As a child, I delivered pumpkins. That was oh. my parents' campaign. So that was only like a one month a year yes. project. Yes, yes. <laughs> Lucrative. We had, to, we had to go around and deliver the pumpkins every October to get people to list with us. Because back then, you really like farmed an area. You really like were specific to one particular part of a neighborhood. And now, what I think is great about your business now is that you really can sell, not, not in other states, but like you can really do a whole area of Los Angeles and get familiar with it, don't you think? Yeah, without the, without, without the pumpkins. I don't need the pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> How did you – you started really young. Did you go to college or so, did you become a realtor at 18? <clears throat> no, I would not have made it through college. I started when I was 18. I was still in high school and I was – Where did you go to high school? Well, I went to Brentwood, which okay. is a private school. But yes. then I went to Beverly for the uh, – for 12 – for for my – what do you call it? Senior year. <laughs> Why did you leave the private school? Well, that's an interesting story. I'd um, like to hear it. Mm, okay. Why not? Uh, well, I guess I – well, basically I cheated on a, on a test or – Two or three or maybe a few. I just needed to graduate because I was getting straight D's, not because I was not smart. I used to get straight A's, but I knew I wasn't going to college. So I just wanted to you get know, the why sh- did you decide that college wasn't? Because I wanted to get into real estate. But why why real estate? Like that's such a it's such an interesting thing to get into as young as you did. Because I always I seems love like And you weren't worried that like older people wouldn't find you or did you just get all of like your just, parents? No, friends? not really. I started door knocking. You door knocked at 18. Sure did. I'm very impressed yep. with that. Okay, so wait a minute. How'd you get caught cheating? Well, that's an interesting story. So I have ADD, so I always get extended time. You know, like mm. they have the extended time thing. Everyone has ADD. Uh, well, and you know what? I te- I got my son tested. Yeah. And because the school told me to. <laughs> that's usually a sign. And no, but then he took the test and they're like, no, he's not. So then he just felt really badly. <laughs> he just... It was like, I don't know. I'm like, because at first I was like, well, at least he'll get extra time at the SAT, right? Like, there'll be, there's some benefit to like having an issue. Right. But I guess his issue isn't big enough for it to benefit any of us. That's just too bad. I know. Especially for him. In any event. So, yeah, I was just, it was a, uh, you know, it was like, and it was, I was in the room with like the special testing for us, you know, challenge people or whatever. Okay. And, you know, I just had my notes out or whatever. Then the drama teacher came in and she was like, what's that? I was like, uh, uh it's, it's an open test, isn't it? I, th- I thought it was an open test. Well, open you book really test. acted dumb. Oh, you yeah. Really- no, I was really acted dumb. I was like, what do you mean? And I was really, she's like, I, I don't know anything about this. I was like, guys, this is an open test, right? But talking to the other people in the room, they're like, we don't know how to respond to this. <laughs> so she's like, okay, I'm just going to make a note of this and walked out. And then I didn't want evidence to still be there. So I just crumpled up and stuck in my pants and walked out. And then she couldn't prove that I had the paper there. But, I mean, it was kind of obvious anyway when I was sitting in the dean's office. Basically, they were like, bye-bye. So do your parents have to come down? Come down to what? Come down to the school when they kicked you out. I mean, I had a car. <laughs> they didn't even come down to like. Well, it wasn't like that day. They're like, leave, take your books with you. It didn't work like that. It's like they have like a dean's meeting and this oh. and that or whatever. And then did you like going to public school after that? Was it more chill at Beverly Hills High? Yeah, they were like teaching me things there that like I learned in seventh grade at Brentwood. So like that tells you something. <laughs> and they say Beverly is like the best public school in the in the country. You got your license. Did yes. you take a little class or did you just study on your own? 
uh, well, you you go to like a class in Westwood or whatever, and then you take the exam. And I think I actually I didn't pass the first time. I don't think I missed it by one question. I mean, who cares about like radon gas like in your house? Well, I yeah. mean, you wouldn't want that, but like, who knows the answers to these questions? Right. And then I then I pass the second time. And so at eighteen, so then you joined an office, mm-hmm. and you were really door knocking. That is. I well, amongst everything that, you know, obituaries, I'm just kidding, uh, door knocking, just, you know, uh, like just, do, you know, in turn, like just kept, you know, getting the ropes. Did your sweet grandmother, rest her soul, did she help you get some clients? Not really. I mean, it was obviously very helpful. She knew a lot of people, but not tremendously, you know, sometimes she'd call me to go, you know, uh, blah, 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 just died. And I go, what do you want me to do about that? She said, go get us a listing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Um, okay, so how old are you when the show approached you, and how did that come about? The show approached me. I approached them, actually. Oh, the show approached you when you were how old? Uh, no, I approached them. I The show was on for a season. People don't realize that it was, oh, it was, it was? on. Oh, it was? Anyway, okay, so there's there was a show. Okay. It, was like, it was about like a bunch of realtors, and then uh, for season two, they changed it up. They just wanted some younger hustlers and whatnot, and so I... Went in for an interview. I called them so up. So you approached the production company. Yeah, you always Good for you. Approach them. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so then they videotaped me. They sent a video to New York to, I guess, Andy Cohen and the, the executives and whatnot. And they're, yeah, they go like, yeah, you got the job. And that was it. Did you know any other realtors going out for this? No. Okay, so then we are here. So it's the three of you. Madison, the other Josh Altman. Right. And you. And I thought it was interesting that they did choose, in the beginning, all men. Because being that I was in real estate, I always felt it was one of those industries, even 30 years ago, like that women kind of dominated. Yeah, and but did back do then, really there, well were, there really weren't, because I know every character in, in the business. There weren't any, like, successful women in our age. Like, there's tons of women right. that are brokers, but, like, that were, like, in the 20 to 30 range. That I just, we didn't know any of them. Okay. There and then weren't. also they wanted the higher, the really high-end stuff, Yeah, too, I mean, which I think makes a difference, too. Real estate agents that are women. There just wasn't, like, in the top 10, like, expensive houses. Right. They were all older. Right. Which... And we need to see that because you constantly hear about the fans being annoyed if, like, the housewives aren't wealthy. They want to see the real estate porn. They want to see, you know, these incredible properties, which is why I think, you know, that's good that they went for a show that was, like, you know, these really expensive homes. Yeah. So what did you think when you found out these were the guys? Like, how did you guys— I mean, I knew get along. Uh, uh, Madison's. He's an. That's an interesting character, in its own. Uh, yeah, Josh, remember when Madison started? His storyline was he didn't know if he was gay or not. Like, <laughs> which really? everyone knows. <laughs> that's how. Like, that's when I came out of the closet. My mom. Was like, I think I might be bisexual. She's like, let's be real here. Come on. How old are you when you said that? To Seventeen. Your mom? My mom's like, let's just do this the right way. <laughs> like, who are you fooling? Like, that's like, come on. Did your mom always know? Kind of. N- not, like. Uh, Kind of, not really. She, just, she no. She really just thought I was just no. Kind of, not really. But, but she then, was what? But then when you said it, then she was, she like, was just like, no problem. On, let's just let's just get this out. Let's just do this the right way. Yeah. So what did you think? And then my you... dad came in my room and was like, <laughs> "Are you sure?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he was like, "I thought I was too when I was younger." I was like, "Oh shit, this is going the wrong direction." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I think this conversation has come to an end." And now had you I ever said that. had you ever tried like dating girls at all before you yeah, kind of... I had sex with girls? Not so You know what I always feel badly? I always feel badly about the girl. The girl. That was the last to have sex with the person I never that then came about out that. as maybe if they were dating, I, but... I know a couple that were the final <laughs> vag bone before the guy went and said, Yeah, dicks for me. And I don't think it's like it's hopefully they won't it doesn't matter, but I always kind of think Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that would. I mean, I can see how that would suck. Um. Okay. So, yeah. So Madison was at saying like, I have a girlfriend, but I also like guys or something. I, I don't. I, what I was uh, polyamorous. No, polyamorous or whatever. He was polyamorous no. means that you ha- are have a like a multiple relationship. Like there's three or four of you in the relationship. Oh, right? I thought he said he was polyamorous. Wait, no, he was poly something. Like open to like ev- there was some BS. Like, okay, whatever. all right. So anyway, now he is out, right? Yes, as gay, and then he had a big issue 
because he had an assistant, Heather, who then to this day, she claims he owes her some commission on or something. But then she fell in love with Josh Altman. Who I introduced them to. Oh, tell me about that. I was having a party at my house and they were there and I was like, oh my God, you guys should get together. Oh, really? So now you have credit for a marriage and two children on your resume. Yes. That's good. Does that make you feel good? I could care less. Oh, why? <laughs> because it's not my, it has nothing to do with me. All right. Um, do you like Josh Altman and the Altman brother? Uh, per my contract, I'm not allowed to discuss that. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> sometimes you guys seem like you're on each other's sides, and then other times you're not when we watch it. It's just a love-hate relationship. Okay. Depends on the day of the week. What about, okay, so then, as we the seasons, but now when we first met you, you had your boyfriend, Colin, right? I don't think that was his name, but that works. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was, I can't remember, actually, myself. He was blonde. Yeah. And he was in it quite a bit. And then yes. you guys broke up. Yes. And then then you met your husband. How did you meet your husband? Uh, I met my, Well, I've known my husband. I mean, we knew each other, like, casually, whatever, just from just being out and whatever. But then I took him on a date, and he, as he says, I was a gentleman, which he did not think I would be. And uh, that was that. And how long you guys – now you've been married how long? This says one year. He's kind of hot, isn't he? I mean, he's gorgeous. Was he a model? or is Yes, it... he was. And then now he is a realtor too. He was a realtor before also. Oh, he was. Yeah. Um, how is it? I love to watch you guys working together when sometimes it's not perfect. The, yeah. Because my parents worked together. And my sister and I, growing up, we would promise each other as we were little kids that we would never work with our spouse. And my sister's an attorney, and she works with her husband, who's an attorney. She lied and to now you. my husband works with me, too. You lied to each other, then. It's – how is it? Well, we, the, the, you know, they always say separate bathrooms. We have separate offices next to each other, so it's not like we're in the room. We would definitely – one would definitely kill the other. But do you work – but some deals you do work on together, right? Yeah, but it doesn't mean we have to sit in the same room together. Okay. I love watching that dynamic because it's so true. What What do you? He beats me at home. What do you mean he beats? I'm kidding. You're an abusive relationship. I'm an abusive. Or is I'm a battered. I'm a battered husband. Um, Wait, we can't, we can't talk about that. No, come on. everything's so me too today. Like I don't know. I know that was a joke. Everyone, chill out. Okay, so chill out. You My had, husband doesn't beat me. You had a huge wedding. <laughs> um, I had a huge wedding. Yes. Now, was there any? decision about possibly not sharing that on the show no okay good i'm I glad you did it i love that stuff because i just saw leanne Locken's wedding on real houses of dallas yeah and let me just ask you what you think of this okay she had it the ceremony in the afternoon and then there was a five-hour break before the reception that's then really weird they got to the reception and they had a charcuterie board. What do you call I it? I hate those things. Okay. And cake. Cheapos. That's it. Wait. No past apps. Hold on. Was there dancing? There was dancing and there was plenty of alcohol. It was an evening event, right? It started at 7.30, not at 10. Why would it start at 10 anyway? I'm just saying if you're not going to serve dinner, I would start it a little later. I'd say like it's – like I would make it at a time like No, I get it. But it was, was it a sit down? Like was it just people mingling and standing up or was it like tables where you sit? Um, I think there were very few cocktail tables where you could stand sit. Was it a beautiful room? Yeah, the channel, she had some fun stuff going on. She, she What was the reason why they didn't – Serve more than just shark nobody dinner. knows. The whole cast is talking about it, but they a couple people. Well, well, didn't she answer why? She hasn't talked about it yet. Herself hasn't talked about it. But I, being that I got married, and I remember we had to go. We got married in a church, and the latest they could do the ceremony because of like their their mass schedule was two thirty, and so I was so I went had had it at the country club like right down the street, and I was like I made sure that there were drinks and apps happening by like four fifteen. And then dinner. And then dinner. Yeah. And then and, and the ceremony and the whole thing ended early because we started early. I hate dinner. But sometimes waves. people want though it to go longer. But then you have this big break, and I think that's well. I've never heard of a break anyway. Like, isn't it always you have the ceremony and then you go straight to the party? Well, listen, isn't as that a, a is as, as a Catholic, you're supposed to get married in the church, so you can't have it at the same location. But as a 
person who gets invited to weddings, I love it when it's all in the same spot. No, I what I'm it. saying is, aren't you supposed to, regardless if it's like even if fine, it's in a church, don't you immediately go over to the next place where the wedding yes. is? Yes. That's not normal to have a gap like that. No, I've never heard know, of that. No, she and her husband, they got in a limo and they went to Sonic's Burger. I don't know if they're a sponsor or what. They got a bunch of corn dogs and then they went back to their hotel room and then she came at 7.30 like in another what wedding was the outfit. Time, but why did they need that time? Like it takes five minutes to get a burger. She said, I want to fuck my husband. I want to <laughs> eat a corn dog. Okay. That's what she said. Okay. Well, she got that. All right. And she got more food than anyone else at the reception. I guess so. But you had a very fancy schmancy wedding. Very fancy. And did you, are you happy you spent all that money? Yeah. Good. Okay, so. It's a little late anyway. I have no sure that it's done. Okay, so let me go back to, wait a minute, where when we get the other people in the cast. Okay, so now the current cast. What season are you guys in? 12. You've done this for 12 years. Probably 13 because, you know, overlap. It's, yeah. I can't believe it's been going on that long. Do you ever consider not wanting to do it? Do you ever have seasons no. where you're like, well, no, it's a great, I mean, it's wonderful for my business that it's just a fun process. So never has you, have you felt like the cameras following you around has crossed the line or caused like personal, bigger personal no. problems for you? No. And I don't put myself in precarious situations where that would happen. Ooh, that was a big word. I sounded really smart. That was smart. good. That doesn't sound like an ADD that kid that was like cheated really on his smart. test. I like that. That's that Brentwood school. It was that Brentwood school coming <laughs> back out of me. Yep. I like that. So you never even took the SAT or the ACT? What's an ACT? It sounds like an alarm company. <laughs> it's like a, another version of SAT. Now you have a choice. Oh, no, I did not. But I, w I was really smart. Like in sixth grade, I was on the John Hopkins list, like for really smart, like people like in the 97th percent. Well, what happened to you? I was, I'm still smart. I just didn't give a shit. You just stopped caring about the actual school. It part. wasn't about. Yeah. OK. It was smarter than it all of them boring. anyway. It was boring to you. <laughs> it was, I was. I, do you like, know a lot? Do you know that um, a lot of ADD and ADHD? people are huge entrepreneurs because of that because they their mind is going yeah. so fast going to the next thing they're going ahead that's why that, that normal school doesn't work for people that's right where you're just sitting there and having to you yeah. know so um with um now you have the current cast how do you like the little english um they're not brothers but how did they come about well james is like was one of the best men at my wedding like he's so one you of my love best him. friends yeah which one's james this one and wait, which one? That, that one. one. How? When did they come over from England? Uh, the Mayflower. <laughs> I don't know. What if they really were like this? <laughs> the pilgrims. Ac the accent is like completely fake. Yeah. Just, to, just like you know how like every like nice restaurant they have like an English like a, a person with an English accent as the hostess. No. Hello. Oh, absolutely. Can I get you in? You know, every time I'd call like a killer spot, it's right. always an English girl yeah. with an English accent. They're fake. They're phonies. So do you think it is They're fake? They're from Pacoima. Um, Where you get your granite. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Um, Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that what you call it? What granite? Granite, marble, whatever. Oh, there, there's. That's where those. That's where the yards. I was making are. a joke, like okay. getting like your drugs or whatever. Oh, like, no, I meant the actual. Granite countertops. Uh, yes, like... that's where you get your marble. <laughs> anyway, so yes, they came over by boat, and uh, they are very successful. I kind of found that interesting too. That, that like, they're successful. No, just that, like, yeah, I think that would be really hard. I mean, mostly, you know, one of the things that you can always sell yourself on as someone like you is like, hey, I grew up in this town. I know people. I know I have pocket listings because I've known these people all this time. Yeah. To come from a completely different country than go yeah, straight to LA. Me, I, sometimes I think about it. I'm like, well, sh I don't know. Maybe that's, I, I had an unfair advantage. Maybe I wouldn't have been successful had I not had those advantages. These kids are much cooler than I am. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and what do you think of Tracy? She I love Tracy. I was at her house the other evening. There was uh, male strippers. Just a normal evening there. Were they filming? No. <laughs> oh my god! Who would have male stri strippers Tracy if you're would. not? She's if you're hysterical. Not filming. Okay. She's just. It was a housewarming party. Oh okay. Because now she's divorced, right? Yes. Single, ready to mingle. Right. I. She was on my show. Yeah. Like a week after the divorce announcement came, so she like was like, "No, I can't talk about it." Oh, but. Did they? Did you know a divorce was coming though? No, I mean, like I booked her, and then like the divorce was announced, and then 
I, you know, I was watching the show, so I was kind of intrigued because they sort of you always hit, you know, you always see. Oh, so stuff. she was on after the doors, you mean? Yes, gotcha. or the announcement, and then it was like she didn't want to talk about, it, which I totally understood, you know. But like, I was like, mm, I want to get into some of that. Yeah. But um, yeah, her story was interesting too. She came. She comes from a lot of money, a lot of real estate lineage. Not real estate. They're in the. They're... I thought he was like a big architect or realtor, no. or some real estate no, no, owner. No, 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 no. What he. Tudor Perini is the company. Ron Tudor is her dad. And they build like every road. You drive on a road, they built it. Like they're oh. they're like they build all the roads across the country. They have contracts with the government. They're mega, mega, mega. Okay. There was a drill outside my office the other day and it said Tudor Perini on it. And it was going brrrr, and I said, Oh, there's a million, a million, a million, a million. Every drill is another million dollars. <laughs> well, Literally. good for her. Yeah. God, you know. Um, what about Frederick from New York coming what? over here? Is that is he really joining you guys? Is he really he, starting he business is now here? Here, yeah. I mean, and I'm, I'm, we're, you know, I'm going to be in New York next week. My husband and I are going to dinner with him. Um, yeah, we're friends with Frederick. So, so, but so, is he going to be on both shows then? No, he's not on our show. Oh, but he's just going to establish himself Yeah, he's just here. trying to – yeah. I mean to me, I don't understand. You have such a good business there. Why would you want to leave it? But I guess he's not leaving it. So if, if he can do it, great. I'm not like intimidated. I, I like him a lot. I hope he does very well. Yeah. <laughs> well, because Heather, <laughs> Heather Altman, we saw in that episode, Heather Altman was not pleased with Frederick moving to L.A. And she felt that – that Josh Altman, her husband, deserved a heads up because that they was had... on my show. I never saw that. I don't think you're watching it. I, we haven't had Frederick. Frederick just came out here, so we. we I swear sh- to God, I saw the episode. BS. They're at, they're at a. It's cocktail a great storyline, though. No, they're at a cocktail party, and she's like, and Heather Altman. I mean, unless my psychic abilities are like off the. Chain. Wait, I remember filming at that yes. thing, but I don't think that came I out yet. I swear to God, it did. Or, or you know what? Maybe I saw a preview. No. No. The anyway, not she's yet. like. Frederick, like, how could you? All I'm saying is that you should have given Josh, my husband, a, a heads up because you were working on some deal together or something. And now we hear you're like going to another company. Like, why wouldn't you come to our company? If they you're are. Join I think him? they're at Douglas Elliman, aren't they? All of them. I don't know. I mean, you're the one who's on the freaking show. I why just, do I know? I just more? sell houses on the weekend. It was featured on the New York show. Oh, that's show. why. Okay, God. Well, I was hello. literally going crazy. I've never seen that show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I don't religiously follow New York, but I do watch it here and there. Yeah. What about when you have to do all these ridiculous things? Like what? L- like the ice cream truck and- What do you mean have to? I have fun with that stuff. I know, but like who, like, come on. What? Like, I'm just, come on. If you were not doing a TV show, would you fucking get an ice I cream I probably truck? would just because I think it's so funny. I think that's the most ridiculous part of the co- of the show. It was hysterical. I know, but I'm saying as like a- like nobody in real estate that's not on a reality show is like dressing up like a pirate. Well, maybe you don't know me or... too well. A pirate? I've never had a what? bird on my shoulder. Halloween. Oh, what did you do for really? Halloween? Oh, really? You don't think so? Tell me what you oh, did for I Halloween. I wish we could show a clip, but unfortunately, this is not on television. Okay. I dressed as a ghost and I went trick or treating in the flats to get listings. Yeah, and one one of the houses is my competitor. And I was dressed as a ghost. He didn't know it was me. I go, do you have any gluten-free candy? And he goes, I hope you die of diabetic shock. But he didn't know it was you? No, that's the best part. He was just saying that. And to I got some... it on camera. So there we it goes. thought was a kid? Yes. He, well, he's known to be insane, this guy. But this is great because now he's not going to get any more business. <laughs> I hope you die of, oh, no, that was my voice. I hope you die of, he goes, honey, I hope you die of diabetic shock. Oh, so he's not only. Oh, he's just a weirdo. Yeah. Oh, my God. So did you put it on your Instagram at least? It's going on our vlog coming out today. Oh, by the way, plug YouTube.com slash Josh Flag. Actually, it is really – the one coming out today is by far the funniest one we've ever shot. You must watch – oh, this is not going to come out today, huh? Is this coming out today, this vlog? I mean this Um, It might be Thursday. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, then watch today's on Thursday. Well, can't they just go back and watch them all? Like – Yeah, but I'm saying this is the Halloween episode. It's really funny. Um. I do. I re- I know that you did the vlog. I've been watching it, and you do really good videos to sell your houses. And what, like, tell me, like, what's the most difficult listing you've ever had to sell, or a couple of them that are like funny stories, or anything I mean, that you can fun, think of? Like, or all, just every that are, day like, is like just something. Well, like this week, this is a weird one. Like, 
Last week, uh, there was an open house and I brought my clients and there was tons of people there and there was going to be a lot of people making offers and my clients go, we want this house. And I go, okay, chill. And they go, we must have it. So it was go, your listing. No. Oh, my someone, buyers. Oh, just your buyers. So Correct. someone else is listing. Okay, yeah. They live in this big house in Bel Air, like a $20 million house and they wanted to downsize to something smaller. So this house is $8 million. Peasants. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> oh, peasants. Anyway, so uh, downsizing. Ugh, can you imagine the neighborhood, what they'll say? <laughs> um, so anyway, so uh, they're like, we want this house. I go, the only way I can guarantee it is just say we'll close in six days, no no inspections, none of this, whatever. I'm not, I'm not uh, a proponent of not doing inspections on a house, but the thing that's in the flats of Beverly Hills, what's the worst that can be there? There's just like – it's flat land. There's no geological issues. And it's fine. The house was really good. I could just get a sense when there's going to be a problem or not. Anyway, so they call me the next day. They go, they go, Josh, we need to talk to you. And I go, oh, shit. What did I do? They go, no, no, nothing at all. Nothing at all. I'm, I'm sure you'll be quite pleased with the conversation. So we sit down. We have dinner. We have sushi. And they're like, we decided we don't like the house anymore. We want to sell it. This is day seven. They just closed the day before. Like, this is not normal. Like, people don't do that. Like, they don't see a house once and then say, okay, we changed our mind after. I'm like, couldn't you have, you know, thought of that before we closed escrow? Anyway, so then we put it back on the market while the owners are still living there, which is really awkward. And then we put it back in escrow. And for – And then you a, found another buyer. And we found another yeah. buyer. So we double popped it. And then I need to find a house from my original buyers. So I sold them a house up the street. So now we got triple pop. And then I have to put their house in Bel Air on the market, which is quadruple pop. Love it. So that's forty million dollars in sales. I didn't even know was coming. That's the best part of my business. You never know what's coming the next day. And the week before, I was like, "Why didn't they? Why didn't they like it? They just jumped on it too quickly. What was no, it? No, they just went back and they're like, "Oh, we forgot there was one bedroom. There was one bedroom too short." I was like, "Okay." God, it's great being rich, it's isn't it? It's Very expensive to be rich. <laughs> I. I can't – That that's amazing. And what about – have you ever had people that want a house so badly that they're like, OK, forget about the inspections. But you do have that feeling that you're like, no, I've wor I've sold stuff on the street. Because like I know being a realtor, like my mom was really good about kind of knowing like this side of the street, nothing happened in the 94 earthquake. But that side of the street, yeah, there's a different geological thing. So she would be like really good. She was like a really caring person about her clients and like – would literally deter people away from houses they wanted to buy sometimes if she felt like <laughs> it was she felt like it wasn't I know and you know what was oh really it's sweet? okay buy this house even though you know there was what? a family murdered in it don't worry it's all good but no that that was really sweet because she passed and I did I had people come and tell me that after like I wanted to buy this house and your mom was like if you were my daughter, I wouldn't let you buy this house I'm gonna keep looking for you like things like that was sweet but have you ever had someone that wanted to skip the inspections, and you were just like, I've never know. done that before. That's not normal. That that was a one time situation. But I've been, but in other, but I've seen that in other on some of these shows. Like I can't believe it. Like when I watch these shows, I'm just like, as someone that was a realtor, like you know, 15 years I've ago, never seen that, but that's how really... people like it's all. I know it's for TV, but that it's all like for verbal. TV. These are real transactions. I know, but was it all verbal like that before? Like it used to never mean anything unless you like actually, like. Well, here's a, over a sign. We do that, that said, but I'm saying if it's easier, like I did this yesterday, I made a deal on a house. Like they were, they wanted the house, and it was under construction, and the deal was either we buy it now and then we finish it, or we let the builder, we you know, finish it for us, or whatever. And we just came to the term. It's just easier to buy it and let the buyers do it on their own. So I just said, hey, we're all here in the room together, all the parties. Let me just, I was like a mediator. I just said, I'm going to take my buyers in the other room. You stay here, and I went back and forward, and we came to an agreement. It was just easier and faster, and everybody. Yeah, no, that that I get. And so then we put it yeah. in paper. Okay, and then what about the all the fighting that goes on on like who's supposed to get the listing and who like poached someone's client and all that? Is that all always? I mean, happening. Yeah. Well, it's not always happening in life. It happens when it happens, and we just happen to have cameras always. But what? How does it make you feel <laughs> when like a previous client? Is like flirting with Josh Altman or whatever about possibly taking his listing. I don't really think that happens much with my clients. I don't remember. I don't think. I don't know a, either. I'm just I asking. Think, yeah, I just remember I, don't I think see I've it. Had that issue, they... but I was just you know that happens. Yeah, it happens. And why would some? But why would someone think when you're on the same show that someone that one of these guys could actually sell it better than you? Don't sell it better. Maybe one has a different has a property and the other one doesn't. Like some knows about a pocket listing or knows something.
No, I understand buy, like using someone as a buyer's agent, but I'm saying like a listing. So as a listing agent? Like uh, I don't know why. If you mean I if somebody has the listing yeah, like and then if you I lose use, it to somebody else? Yeah, like if I've used you twice and you've been on the show for 12 years, why would I ever go, okay, now I'm going to sell this house again. But you know what? I want the English brothers to do it or I want Josh Altman to do it. Like you're, it's still going to get the same exposure on the show and I know that you work well. That's what well, I It's I'll not just get. about the exposure. It's about like who they think is more qualified. Like I'm more qualified to sell – classic homes in Beverly Hills and estates in Bel Air than Josh Altman is, but he's more qualified to sell these white boxes, you know, oh. in the hills. It just, everyone has their Got own it. niche. He does like the brand new stuff. Yeah. And, you and do Madison's like... like more qualified to sell like shacks on the beach. Right. The Malibu. Is he still featured in the show? No. Oh. Um, I got a little fight with him the other night. You got in a fight? Why? Little pussy little, can what I say happened? bitch? Yeah. Pussy little bitch. What happened? Tell Nothing. Us. I made an offer on a house. And he comes back and goes, that's ridiculous. Like, it's it was, not. It was his listing. It was his listing, but it was in Beverly Hills. And okay. that's, he doesn't Beverly Hills broker. So I made an offer. The house is worth 12. It's not worth a penny more. And they're asking 17. So I offered 12. They're like, and he's like, that's $5 million under asking. How dare you insult us? Blah, 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 blah. It's worth every penny of what we're asking. I'm like, look, dude, you, when, when I come to Malibu, you can tell me about property value there. You've never sold a house here, and I'll tell you what it's worth. And in six months, you're going to call me and say, hey, I wish we, we're, we're interested in taking your offer, but by then we'll have bought something else. And so he's like, you just got all bitchy. I wish the audience could see my head shakes right now yeah. like, doing that like thing. And so what happened? Nothing. I that guy, So then you, so that they did Then I saw him at Tracy's house the other night. We just like did not like – like we made like walked right by each other. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I hope he fixed his jaw. Um, this is getting really weird. Okay. So where do you see – like where do you see real estate going? Are people starting to get nervous that it's slowing down? It's slowed a little bit and it still will continue, but it's nothing crazy. But why are the New York people well, – you don't watch it, but the New York people are acting like it's the end of the world. Because it is the end of the world there. There's so much inventory. New York did, did tank. There's – What happened in New York? Explain it Okay. Well, there's a couple of things. One, nobody wants to live in a co-op anymore because you – you the value of them suck because it's – do you know what a co-op versus a condo is? Kind of, but can you explain to my audience? A condo is like, hi, I want to buy a unit here. Great. Give me your money. I'm living there. Co-op is – it's like a country club. They have to approve you to live in the building. Got it. So – it's a nightmare in these buildings because you have these old waspy families that don't want like this young – like Madonna was turned down. Like all the mega, mega people are turned all the time. Like Madonna tried to buy an apartment on Fifth Avenue. They said not a chance. She's in the music business. Like I heard Tom Hanks tried to join LA Country Club and they're like, no, thank you. That's strange. I wonder why he wouldn't get in. Is he Jewish? No, they just didn't want Hollywood types. Oh, that's like interesting. Like there's certain like old money yeah. in LA that doesn't There's want social Hollywood. clubs I yeah. can't get into because yeah. of that reason. And the owner will say specifically like, we really want you here, but we just can't. Is the show coming off the air? I'm like, not that I know of. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then there's – Okay. So the co-ops is like they have to decide. Yes. So it's, and and that's there's also... certain boards that are really easy. Certain boards are hard. So even in the best buildings, like 740 Park is the best building. That's where Brooke Astor lived. The apartments are a fortune in there. But if they were condo, it would be even – like – quadruple the amount because people know that it's really hard to sell those apartments. Okay. Can you imagine I have a buyer who's willing to pay me $50 million for my apartment and the board says, nope, sorry. Like that sucks. So you would get a listing in one of these things and then you bring the offer and you have to do like a whole profile on who the person is, like what their business is. Well, the annoying is, weird come. part is though, you would think that like you would get approved first and then you can continue with the escrow. But first you make the purchase offer. You do all the paperwork. They don't have escrow. You do, you do all, all through the this. Work. Then they come in for the meeting and they say, no, it's reversed. It's the dumbest thing on earth. I don't understand And why. they just decide because based on what? Like They might not on... like you because you're religion. I mean, there's, they can say anything they want. It's like a country club. And they, they might just have a problem with a person. Maybe there was something they don't like about this person. So then why? And so you think that the, it's gone down because now new buildings have gone up that are not that. And that those are so selling those sell quicker? for more, but okay. because there's so much inventory and there were so many buildings that went up, and also another thing was a ton of like you know countries uh, in Asia and whatever were you know buying these apartments to get money out of the country, which is, was illegal, like shell corporations, and you know and and that stopped because you, you know the U.S. government got involved. It was just a whole bunch of stuff. It's just the perfect storm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not such a bad thing. I mean, every time I'd watch it, I'm like. What's God. not a bad thing, a co-op? No, but like that that some of the things just like take a take a breather because I was oh, like yeah. watching it and I was like – and every single offer was like it's coming from Asia. It's a full price. It's three-day escrow. It's all cash. And I'm like how is like 
a, a family in New York that make a million or two million a year, they can't even buy a place because they. That's actually, why they're living in the Bronx or Queens or moving yeah, into you know whatever. Because they actually have to get a mortgage. Like that, the fact that no. Well, oh, by the way, and you has, cannot get a mortgage in a co-op. It's all cash only. So that's another issue. Oh. Oh, and also the fees in co-ops can be like, I think at the pier or the, it's like thirty thousand a month in homeowners dues. Thirty thousand a month just in homeowners. The Carlisle's fourteen thousand. I know that for like a tiny little apartment. Yeah, some of them are insane. I have a question because I don't know the answer. Okay, in Hidden Hills, uh-huh. you may not know the answer either. I heard that in Hidden Hills, the homeowners' fees depend on what you what your purchase price is. Doesn't that seem like extremely unfair? Yes, because what so if you someone, bought something thirty years ago? Exactly. So no, thirty I would years guess, ago, people are paying like two hundred dollars no, a month. I would guess that it's based on uh, well, either square footage could be an option, or it's just set. You have everyone has the same fee. Oh, okay. Sometimes buildings, bigger apartments. Yeah, it's probably ba- based on the land size or the square footage. I would assume square footage. Have you gotten into like more like of a flipping? Have you ever f- like f- bought houses yourself and flipped them? Yes, or got but excited not purposely. To? Like I like a, a lot of times I've bought houses and people have just like one time I bought a house and the founder of um, MySpace yeah. <laughs> came and offered me a million dollars more like three months later. And I didn't even the house was exactly the same as what I bought it. So I was like, oh, great. Sign on the dot. No, but I'm saying have you ever – Bought some of these classic homes yourself and been like. I did one once, yeah. I want to do, but it. I live in them also. Yeah, do you enjoy the one that? we're building now? We'll, yeah, we'll, we're not selling. That's I mean, sure, if somebody gives us twenty million, we'll sell it, but it's not happening. Because now you guys are together, like designing it. The yeah, way you want. it's our house, and it's going to be amazing. What What do you think is the new style? That's like what's out, what's in? As far as like, if someone was going to redo some stuff in their house what would you recommend that they like don't do or do okay like i wouldn't do little mosaic tiles anymore that were colored that's what's probably dark hardwood floors nobody does that anymore now why tiles change now it's all about lighter but lighter in the 80s so it came back like things come back they go back and forth and go back and forth what's the floor color you're supposed to get now today people like gray i personally like a lighter like kind of beige-ish more beige-ish it depends i mean i still love the dark floor I love it. You're the only one. No, I'm not the only one. Mm, I don't know. My floor is like a nice chocolate brown, but it's the good wood and everything. But and it's newer. It might be pretty. I don't know. I'm not... It is, but thin planks or big or wide planks. Oh no, they're wider. I is like that... thin and now planks. thin coming back in. It's wide. Thin for now. is back in if you're doing, for instance, like a <laughs> chevron or a herringbone pattern, and that a lot of people do that. That's very pretty. Pretty. Okay. Now, what about the countertops? What's the color of the countertop? The countertops are still pretty much the same. People love Calcutta or Carrera. Calcutta is like uh, has a little bit more gold in it, and you know. So it's like white, but with a little bit of action. It's white with with you've seen it with big veins everywhere. Yes. Okay. So because we looked at that because we have the granite that was like very popular in like two thousand and five. That's like it's still light, but it's it's I think granite. That's Caesar Stone. More going on. No, it's granite. And it worked great. I don't think anyone uses granite anymore. Why not? It's very 80s and 90s. I know, but the granite material, like you can put anything on it. But and it's you... ugly. I know. Do you so, still have the granite? Well, we we went to the place in Pacoima and we looked Pacoima at- Pacoima and Sun, where where on Sun, Sun, Sun Valley. Valley. Where Sun is Valley. Sun Valley? Like We went to Sun where Valley. Where is Rancho Cucamonga? Can it's I like just an t- invented place. Can I tell you how mean we were to my sons on this day? What? I have very few weekends that I'm not doing stand-up. And so we wanted to go to the granite yard, and we also wanted to go to a furniture place. And so I told my boys. We went to Disneyland? <laughs> I just made it sound like they were closer and, like, that it was going to be more fun. And they were what like. What did you say? We're going to pick out stone, and it's going to be, like, yeah, and, your stone. Yeah, and then they were just like, that was the worst Saturday of our lives. And I was like, and then when we went to the furniture place, that was like an hour away. And they're like, oh, my God. They're like, I would have out. loved that. I know. You would have loved it. I would have loved it. You should, I wish I had one of you. Yeah. Anyway, so, yes, we looked at the, that stone, and that's what we're, we're going to replace it with. Because okay. I do feel like our stone is very mid-2000s. Yeah, it is really not. Cool. Where it's at, but now I'm afraid now. The only granite like, that's acceptable is solid black granite because there is in the world no such thing as solid black marble. So if you see like black and white checkered floors, that's always that's a it's called negro marquina. It's a black solid granite which if you look really closely, you still see the speckles in it. 
Because, but I'm afraid now that everybody's getting that that Calcutta Gold. That like in two years, it's, it's going to be out. Well, here's the thing: it's white. What is the next fad in a couple of years? Going to be brown marble or green emperor marble? It does. It's just there is no other option than white that goes with everything. So I don't see how that's possible. And it's been around for years. I don't know. What what else would there be? <laughs> I don't know because I like a light kitchen. I've noticed now people are doing like the darker, like black cabinets and gold like stuff. That. I don't like it because I, I wake know. up in the morning and I want light. Like yeah, I want to have that. my coffee in like a cheerful room. So I know I want it to look like a nightclub. Is that it's, it's, that's why I tell people don't build contemporary because it's beautiful now. In five years, it's going to look like a 1980s movie. Oh, my God. But, oh, my God. Like, yeah, where cocaine is the main like where character. cocaine and black leather sofas. Yes. And white stucco with those glass blocks in the house. Remember those glass, glass blocks? blocks. Oh, the, I remember go, going to an open house with my blocks. mom in the 80s. And it was a brand new construction. And it was straight out of, like, Lesson Zero, which I loved Or like loved a Michael it. Douglas movie yes. with, on the beach. What's the one where he's with... Uh, where she's trying to kill, he's trying to kill her. It was, was it Michelle Pfeiffer and John D- and Michael Douglas, or one of those like '80s movies, like where the wife is trying to get killed by the husband? Is get, no. uh, yeah. Wait, you jump with Gwyneth Paltrow. That was Such great. No, that one. is that my was in favorite. No, that's a different one. No, that was that my is favorite. an apartment I'd like to live in. Oh my god, that was what was so that? So it was called? a takeoff of Dial M for Murder by Hitchcock. Oh my god, it was so good. Okay. Yeah. I don't Phenomenal know. Any, any, any Michael. Michael Douglas movie is amazing. Yes, but you're right. It's a Did lot of that block Did you ever see the Sonny Von Bulow movie? Remember uh, Perfect? Yes. Uh, uh, whatever it was called with Sonny Von Bulow and Glenn Close played Sonny and he was trying to kill her. Yes, I love I love anything about killing love your spouse. Love death movies. Um, what, what about tubs? If tubs? I, yes, I have a jacuzzi tub. I have to get rid of that, huh? Uh. But you can get. But like, I never go in it because once I built a pool with a jacuzzi, yeah. I always go in. The but you jacuzzi. can get a tub that looks like a normal tub and has like the little dots in it and doesn't have like those '80s big like looks like weird sex toys like are attached yeah. to it. I think you just gotta take it out. But you should have a crawl uh, like a tub. I think you should. Oh, I think it oh looks, having a tub. Of course, you, you have, have to a have tub a tub or two for right? resale and just yes. yeah. I have. We have two tubs in the house. What's another? Can you give any other tips of what someone should should do or should not do? Well, I mean, obviously, open floor plan is very popular. Um, you know, I personally don't like a dining room that's attached to my living room. A lot of these contemporary homes, like they just section the, like the it's a huge, massive room, and then you have a dining room on one side and the living room. I think that's kind of weird, but some people like it. So I like more of a formal dining room, like you know, but. Um, I think a lot of people don't use dining rooms. A lot of they people don't, don't use like, like nice ni- china. Right? So it's nice to have. So when you're not using it, you use your family kitchen area. Yeah, but you still like to have the dining room. Look, the things are popular and other trends. So that could be trendy right now, but what are you going to do in 10 years from now when you literally cannot put a dining room in your house? It's like, you know, back, back in the day, you had a family room and it was separate from the kitchen. Today, people want it all together. Well, what if it goes back to that way in 10 years and you're screwed? What about all the big, like, Italian Tuscany type of homes Nobody that were built. Those I know. So, how are those houses going to sell? Like, no millennial wants that house. That's what? why I don't tell people to bring to ice. The problem there's really you're you're fucked no matter what. There's not, nothing is going to be consistent. The only thing that stays consistent is a traditional house, a traditional brick, white brick. You know that will never go away, and it's, they've always been around. But if maybe that's not for a younger. I mean, basically, people my age that you know, or don't have classical taste are kind of screwed, whatever they buy. So that's why I always tell them, don't buy an amazing modern glass box in kind of a B location. Buy like a kind of like a shitty house in an A location because the house is a depreciating asset. That goes down in value, the structure. But I feel the like... land is what goes up. So if you have to be in it, so imagine being a B location with a great new glass house or an A location with not such a great house. In, in 10 years from now, what's going to be worth more? Both of them are going to be teardowns, so you might as well take the A location. See, of course, you and I think that because we were raised as young realtors that have a brain. The kids today, they watch so much HGTV, they can't vision it. Don't you find it hard to convince uh, like a rich millennial to take yeah, that but you know grandma's what? Guess house? What? I've, that, guess what? I've done my job. I've told them I can't force somebody to do something Doesn't I want to. Doesn't it frustrate to. you when you like no, show them this the... great house that if they just got rid of no, the No, because I know stuff? it's just not going to happen. So why think about it? They're not going to get it. I don't think you try hard enough. I try hard. <laughs> I think it's so frustrating when someone can't see it. When I see some of these kids that I follow on Instagram that are suddenly wealthy and I'm happy for them, and I see 
that are all buying those brand new houses that are like not a good location. So stupid. I'm like, dude, what are you, you doing? could you could you could you do could build this. a real estate empire by being smart with yes. the money right now. You could be in a cold. It's like all these football players and they never the buy. Like if they were smart, like why don't they like these football players? Just like put, you're making so much money, buy a good piece of real estate, do something, don't like spend it all, and then like, become like 16. You're like I used to play in the NFL, and like what do you do now? Yeah, like don't they get like south of the boulevard or a cul de sac? Maybe not like, south. Just well, buy I like mean, a. Just I'm saying, like in a in an area, like I always go like think about it. Think about they're like why I live in the valley, and they're like why is south of the boulevard. Why do you, why do people think I'm like because it backs up to the Santa Monica Mountains, which yeah, can never better. be built upon, and you're not a block from the boulevard where there's homeless people in their tents. How do you feel about the homeless situation? I don't see many homeless people in the valley are there? They're coming around. They're coming over. They're moved. They're walking down Barham. <laughs> they're coming their way. They come from the north. <laughs> what do you think of that problem? I think it sucks. But you know what? It's it's what's really screwed up is that I okay here I go I buy a 10 million dollar house and I have a homeless dude like exactly. in front of my house so people might think this is horrible the other day there's a homeless person there I literally is this bad I stopped and I said could you move I mean is that horrible it was your house or you're listening it was a, a block from our house and yeah. I was like we're having a party tonight I don't need to see a shopping cart in the middle of the road so did you and I so what I said to her is I'll give you a hundred bucks and I'll pay for your uber ride to a shelter she goes you go to a shelter and I go and yeah, then, they don't want to go to a shelter. They don't want to go. Why? Because they're drug addicts. But why? Uh, then do drugs in the shelter. Why would you want to do, drugs, do drugs, in drugs in the cold? They can't do drugs in shelter. They so, can't do drugs in homeless houses. That's why well, it's this not. Was, a, that's why it's not a housing well, problem. Finally, she goes. Well, this was great. She goes. Well, I'm leaving this week, and I go. You are? And she, I go. How soon? And she goes. I'm going to San Clemente. And I'm I go, lucky for San Clemente. I know. I go. Watch out, people. I go. How are you getting there? She goes. I'm taking the bus. I go like what? It's like the 1950s, like the Greyhound. Like the no bus goes to like San Clemente. And she, I was like, do you know where San Clemente is? And she goes, yeah, it's like near Santa Barbara. And I go, no, San Clemente is south, like <laughs> yeah. San Diego. And she goes, well, I'm going there. I'm going fishing. And I go, you're going fishing? And she goes, yeah, one time I got a big sea bass. It was so big. And eventually I was just so entertained. I'm like talking to her. And I was like, you know, I'm really sorry. I was kind of mean to you the other day. I've told her three times to move. I, I feel badly. She's like, and oh, she had our homeless buddy also with her. He was playing the guitar. And he was like, and I don't like how he was yelling at you because I said to the guy, like, can you move too? And he was like, Thomas Jefferson, I have the right to be here. I'm like, okay, so he's an educated homeless person. And if she didn't like how he was speaking to me. People, it is not. I'm gonna get so much hate mail. No, you're not, because I want I want people to be educated that it's not a. I don't have a problem with homeless people, but it's not a housing issue. What it is is that they've allowed them to put their. You can put your tent up. Well, can't they build a community where they can all live and do drugs if they want? That's what. (laughs) That's what we want to do. Like beautiful haciendas. Like we, it just you shouldn't be allowed to have tents where people can shit on the street. No, and it's and, not and India. there's like there's rats I've everywhere. Been to India. That's where they do. Like they hold their that's baby what up and it, they shit on the that's street. That's what's happening. But what can you do? There's it's we need to group. hire you can't hire somebody to take somebody off the street. It's like yes, you're you, allowed. You, well, you could change the laws. You could change the laws. It's a it's a it's a public thoroughway. I mean. Well, maybe how is how is it that you know what? And then try try to put a catering tent when you're trying to film something. And the cops will be right there and say, you can't put a catering tent That's here while you're I filming it. About that. But you can have a four-bedroom oh, tent. you can get a permit to close off the street. But you can, you can get a four-bedroom tent and live there and do drugs in your tent. How is that? Why? How, that's interesting. I never thought about that. How do they get a permit to shut the street off, but they can't? Oh, but it shut the street off for everybody, not just homeless people. So then it would become discrimination. Like, you can let me sleep on the road, but I can't sleep because I'm homeless. It won't I mean, work. nothing is going to happen until people start to speak up and, and, and hire and not hire, uh, reelect different people that I think will every change things. state or say you should build a beautiful community for them and just, I guess we'd have to pay for it, but I mean, it's better than walking, driving through Beverly Hills and having no, like, you should just, what it should be is, and I don't know, I may have to cut this out too, yeah, but I think what this it should, might have to be cut, whatever, but. who cares? This is what it should be. You shouldn't, there should be a law passed that you can't squat it used to be a law somehow the law changed you can't have your shit in the middle of the street okay on a sidewalk when that happens they pick you up and they take you to the place that you can't have that you know and eventually why did that change then 
Why is that? If that was a law, why did they change that? I. I that's what I want you to find out because there was. I'm going to go like to sen- I'm going to go to to the. I'm going to go to Senate and I'm going to change this. We should. You want to go with me? We're going to march in front I of the Capitol. I swear to God, because it's not. It's not a housing issue. It's it's that it's a drug addict issue. It's not. It's it's not that someone because they can go to the shelter. Do you want to do crack right now? <laughs> this has gotten. Too juicy. Wait, let me see if there's anything else I want to ask you. So, okay, so you think Sorry, it's slowed down a little bit. for you high end. So, well, what do you think about now? Have you ever had somebody that you're showing a house to, and maybe they're from out of state, and you're like pulling up, and here's your your friend and her shopping cart and her buddy quoting the uh, yeah, it's Constitution. Not easy, yeah. And quoting what, the Constitution. And what do you say? I was, was do you try to take a different route? I'm like, to get to, like, to the house? Look at that homeless dude. And I'm like, what homeless person? I stand in front of the. I, I don't see what. I don't see a homeless person. He's like talking to me, the homeless person. I'm, I don't hear anything. But what do they say? I mean, are some people being like. I haven't had that happen, thank God. Are they. Uh, are people wanting to get behind in a gated community because of that? So that they can't have a tent on their well, sidewalk? This is a good because example. you so can like, have a tent on your here, sidewalk. So here's a good example. So my parents live in a very fancy neighborhood north of Sunset off of Doheny. Sunset, obviously, like at nighttime, there's like clubs and there's like yeah. whatever. So like I'm working with the street. Like it's – you don't want like to live in a $10 million house and then you have some like homeless dude walk up the hill. It's like crazy. So we've right. already started getting – there's no parking there anymore. So you've got rid of like the people parking there. We're working to have a guard and a gate and the street's all repaved and, you know, call it Weatherly Estates or whatever. And so then – you can't get in there. So, yeah, but, I mean, that's a rare situation. You can't you can't do that, like, in the flats of Beverly Hills because the flats are a grid. It's like you every street goes in a grid, and it's you would have to gate off, like, it, it's right. impossible. Right, right. So, I don't know. But when we run for office, Josh and Heather McDonald. <laughs> who's going to be vice president and who's going to be president? I will be vice president. I have no problem with that. Good. I want to – I don't want to have to go to every event. Good, because it wasn't an option anyway. I was just trying to be polite and hoping that you would say vice president. You have you have more uh, Instagram followers than I do, so I'm going to let you be president. After this, I might lose a few. So it, I don't think so. I think it's people— like caught out I, half of this. I think people are just starting to now, like, talk o- more openly about it. About what? About that this is wrong, that what's happening in L.A., and what that other states should be scared place? of it. No, uh, no, it's not even about the – it's about the disease. What disease are we talking about? I forgot which Okay, if everyone's shitting on. on the streets. Oh, yeah, that's not good. And the shit goes – and the rats are around. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> The, this is like, like, like. Can't they at least like put toilet paper? I mean, like 1920s diseases are going to be coming back. <laughs> the black. Plague. Yes. We're gonna in have, Beverly Hills, we're going to have the the what's it called? The lung, the black lung, or whatever. Yes. Yes. But you're still you're still going to be selling your house for black lung. You're going to be going in your ice cream truck and <laughs> trying to get these people to go and selling homeless people ice cream. How much do you have to spend on these crazy open houses that you guys do? Depends on the open house, depends what we're doing. The other day I spent $3,000 on a charcuterie board. You said you hate charcuterie. I know, that's the point. You guys spent 3,000. And I was like and I asked the guy How much was left over I, after? So much. There's always so much left. And I go I to the guy and so much about I the say, looks. what is this? I just said just between you, what does it cost to do this board? He goes $1,200. I'm like, "What?" He's like, "I have to go to the farmers market." And, and all the he's different like, Jesus. I charge 3,000. I'm like, "This is a good business. I'm going to get in the charcuterie business." And he probably reuses the cheese anyway. Exactly. What who, are you going to do with it? Who the fuck is going to know? If who's going to know? If the block was three ninety nine or thirteen ninety nine, and who's going to know that it didn't come from the last party? Put a couple more strawberries, clean it up, and you've got now you've got twelve hundred, and you have a six thousand handful so really of almonds, forty eight hundred dollar profit. A little thing of honey. Yeah. I it's hate, a by big, the way, I hate that. It's just a big, give me a piece of Munster. I don't want this bullshit. I want a Munster and a, <laughs> a slice of roast beef on rye. Like, give me a little chopped liver. I don't want like a, a jam parfait and a honey with and like make me your favorite combination. He's like, okay, I'm gonna do a sweet honey with a cucumber and a a, so you, a, a French cheese with a slice of bacon. I'm like, this is disgusting. So why for three thousand? Why didn't you just get little like fun sandwiches? Because that's not Beverly Hills fancy enough. Because it just was pretty. It was beautiful, and I don't honestly. I should have should have gotten Nate and Al's. Really, you should have. I love Nate Nails. I love all that stuff. You've been to Nate Nails? Oh yeah. They're moving. Where? Down the street. So sad. Why? Well, what, if it's down the, the street, building got why? sold. Oh, 
But people go there because they want a dirty, ugly restaurant. They don't want to bleed on bright. I told them, take the booths, take the cottage cheese off the ceiling, take everything and move it into the next place. And are they going to? I don't know. They don't, they're not listening to me. <laughs> I don't care, they care what I think. I hope so. Where do you see yourself in five years? Dead. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> in five years? I don't Probably doing the same thing. You think the show will continue on? Look, I said so many times in the network, I said, I don't get it. Seinfeld lasted seven se- seasons. Why does This is not Seinfeld. Why doesn't he keep going? They go, in today, the way it works today is... As long as the ratings keep going, we don't pull it. Like, there's no reason to. If people, and actually, our ratings keep going up and up. And I go, like, I don't, I just can't imagine that a show could be on that long. And they go, look, this is what, if, if the ratings are the ratings, the ratings are the ratings. And so, where are you right now in the filming? This they season? might pull me, but I don't know. But so don't every think. year that, that every year you don't know, just like a housewife, if they're going to ask you. I back. mean, look, if I would get a sense if that was the case, like I would have like meetings. My the network would probably be like, we're not. You know, you're not performing and that you're not entertained. I don't know. I mean, it just doesn't. I've never gotten that sense. Does your husband like being famous? He doesn't care. I, to be honest with you, I don't really care either. It's not like I walk around like with, you know, my shoulders hot. Who am I kidding? I like it. Yeah. I mean, I was trying to have a moment there where I was, <laughs> and I could see everyone in the room was not believing it. Well, I have to say. It is fun when you go out to eat and it's people great. come up to you and they're like, I, you're such a delight. I enjoy you. And don't you think you get listings because people want to be your friend? Absolutely. No, not I mean, well, I don't know about that, but they like, no, they want to use me because I'm a good broker. Right. But I also, I am the best broker on that show. But also, do you show. ever have a former clients that um, then want to be your friend and then the, it's closed and you're like, how many more years do I have to keep this friendship going on if they don't? currently live in a house that you want to live. I don't cut off relationships, but I like I make like I draw the look I I the many clients I've worked with actually become very close friends of okay. mine. Okay. So of course I continue the relationship. If it's somebody who wants to be my best friend and and I'm through the transaction, I'm I'm not alluding that I'm not like let's let's have lunch, let's go to coffee, like whatever. I think they get the message that this is a working relationship. You can always call me if you need something, but I don't want to be your best friend. If I do want to be your best friend, then we'll be best friends. But I'm not here to like like, that's not my job. Do you ever have someone that listed with you and then at the end they were like, I thought this would be more fun? No. I've had people say, this is getting too awkward. <laughs> what do you mean it's getting too awkward? Like, maybe they'll see the real me and they don't like my sense of humor or they'll think that, like, just they'll be like, no, the the answer is no. They usually, they usually like it. <laughs> and then what about when they say, um, I'd like to bring in another broker to share the listing? To me, as someone that was a realtor a long time ago, that's something, like, we never heard. I think that's weird. Like, why would bringing on another person? It's because out they there think already. That, because like, they're stupid and they think that it's going to, it's the, it's the, but guess what? If you're about to lose the listing, you'll take it because 50% of nothing is better. Exactly. But usually they come in, that usually doesn't happen. To, like, that, I that's, feel like that only happens on these TV shows. I no, don't know. what happens is they come in in the beginning and say, I want two brokers. Uh huh. If they say that halfway through listing, it's a little offensive. It's like, we don't think you're good, but. I think that must be so weird to try to share a listing when you're in two different real estate offices. Like, who, who pays for the flyers? Who pays for the photographer? Like, you how send you send a bill s- at the end and you show what, what you did and what they did. And then, but isn't it like, I don't know. I think it's such a weird thing. What about, do you have a whole little team like everybody else? Or is it no, just you guys? No, we don't want that. Yeah, I never, I never wanted that either. You're I not, thought... Then it's like I know brokers that come in for the listing and I and you know shake your hand and say sign it, and then they assign somebody to the listing. Like the other day, I was like, I said to somebody, "How do you like your real estate?" He's like, "I only met him once." Yeah, that's and like you're a... paying us a lot of money. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah, it's like a talent agent. Like basically, <laughs> I haven't talked to my talent agent in three years. Oh, have sorry, I. except for when we renegotiate my contract. <laughs> once a year, we we talk. Are you getting deals like as like as like a spokesperson? Being... Yeah, I mean, we like you know, endorsements. We do uh, speaking engagements. We do, and just... you like that? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. I speak all the time. Hmm? People sponsor the vlogs. Yeah, we. Sponsor oh, that's a lot good. Of yeah, we've done. So you make a lot with... of money from all that stuff. Yeah, we just stuff with Ralph Lauren. We've done stuff with the Real Real. We've done stuff with Dollar Shave Club. Like lots of stuff. Oh, when's my Maserati coming this week? Yeah. Oh, you get a Maserati? Yes. So you get to drive it around for free? The yeah. whole lease is free? No. For how long? Just for a couple of weeks or whatever. Oh, just for a couple weeks. I don't even weeks. really want it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's like, I, we, don't, we have enough cars. But I'm like, okay, well, who's going to say no? I'm going to let Olympia, our housekeeper, drive it. I'm serious. Okay. She's a great driver. All right. Um, she'll be very happy. 
Does she ever drive you like out for the night? Like, why get an Uber driver if we both want to drink and then you can be in your nice well, car? Well, the problem and she is just she drinks too. So, oh, that's we all go in the Uber together. She loves. Sometimes we'll come home. She stays sometimes, and she'll be on the couch having a margarita or a glass of red wine. She'll, be, I'll be like, don't mind me. <laughs> Do you mind if I have a glass too? Oh, sure, I poured for you. Is she featured on the show much? No, but we should get her more on the show. But she's you really, fabulous. You should. She's wonderful. How'd you find her? Craigslist. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. She worked for my husband before. Oh, okay. She's amazing. She and she's like not like a normal. She was a nanny. She lived in Rome. Like this woman has a Cartier watch. Like she's like a very seasoned. But what does she do for you? She's your housekeeper. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what? Um... This woman has traveled on more private planes than I have. Nice for good for you. She works for a lot, works for a lot of good people. Do you um, only fly only fly private? No. Okay. I rarely fly private. Do you, do you ever charter it yourself or only when you're a guest? No, what do you think I'm like, like the Rockefeller? No, I'm saying I've never chartered one myself either. I've been on them because I've been a guest. I have but... been on – who's playing? Oh, I've been on – I had well, one friend that did own one. And then when I would uh, open for Chelsea, that sometimes the, the deal would include a private plane. And um... I've only been on – I went on – with the first private plane I went on, this is great. I sold a house to this family, and they wanted to be my best friends. And I was like, "Well, but we're flying private. I'll go be your best friend." Yeah, so then we fun. go down to Mexico. Then I'm like, "I'm I." So you're on a them, Mexican vacation with which them. I hate Mexico too. So they have a house in in Correas, Mexico. Okay, which is already boring. But anyway, so we're on the plane, and I asked the stewardess for a vodka tonic, and she goes, "No, we're sober." And I go, "Turn the plane around." I was stuck there and drinking tea and doing yoga. Wait a minute. Not just on the flight. You mean the whole trip to Mexico was Nobody sober? Nobody told me this was a sober trip. How long was it? Four days of hell. How – did you bring a friend with you? What do you mean? Bobby and I went. Oh, I didn't know if it was before you guys were together. No, we went. So the two of you – and what was his attitude? Was he like at least a little more positive? Like we could detox and get healthy for four days or was he pissed too? He can handle it. I can't. Okay. So what did you do all day? And you had to have every meal and be entertaining? I, I wanted to just blow my brains out, to be honest with you. Did they know that? No. Okay. So I you, sold them a $17 million house. I, of course they didn't know you, that. So you had to be a delight. Were you I a delight was, or no? I was a little You're cranky. not even a delight now, really. I know. I'm, this is probably <laughs> miserable for you. I'm like sitting here like anxious or whatever, but that's just my ADD. I don't – I – I'm actually I, quite enjoying I, it. I, I like your personality. I like it. How would you describe it? Like just – Like blunt but funny. Um, <laughs> I don't obnoxious. know. <laughs> With a twist of obnoxiousness. Do you think that family will listen to Juicy Scoop? And re- and think that no, I don't even give a fuck to be honest with you. Am I allowed to swear on this? Yeah, so I don't you give don't a give... fuck because honestly, that was the worst trip ever, was... and they should know. Can I say the c word? No. Yes, she was. She... Is that a... no? That's going to get me in trouble. Wait, but she still brought you on this trip. But afterwards, then she was like a total bitch to me because I didn't want to do yoga with her. <laughs> I was like, I was coming down to sip mar- like margaritas on the beach, not drink like herbal tea. And when did you realize it was sober trip on the on plane? on the plane? And you, you're, but then did you think, well, at least when we get to the no, the house. I realized because why would you have a sober plane and not have a sober house? And you guys, but what about you guys, you and Bobby going to like out to dinner somewhere and just having some time alone? We were in Korea. Do you know where that is? It's in the middle of nowhere. There are no restaurants. I think that's what was featured on Real Housewives of Dallas. I think they had a place there too, and it was like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the Boondocks. How long was the drive from the airport to the place? Let me put it to you this way. Far enough that you couldn't stop somewhere if I wanted to escape the house to get booze. Got it. Um, How long ago was this? I blocked it out of my memory. I mean, this honestly. Horrible. See, this is where I'm like. I hate people that have no <laughs> bars in their house and have coffee bars. Like, okay, be sober. But like when you're entertaining, let the guests have a drink. What, you're so out of control you can't look at the bottle and, and, and help go? You drunk? I mean. <laughs> I honestly, I completely empathize, sympathize with you. I, I can't imagine thinking that I was going with some one percenters on a private jet plane for four days of luxury in Mexico and not going to have a drink. So you, and expected to do like yoga and hang out and talk. And this one was so boring. 
Oh my god! Awful. I sometimes I've joked and said I wanted to be like you know comedian to the stars. Like if you're ri- not stars but rich people, if you're really rich and you'd like to take me on a trip. I'd like to go on like a big fancy yacht and I'll be like a delight at dinner. But after your story, I think I'm going to change my mind. Do you know I've never been on a yacht? I, I didn't know that. I'm just saying, you would think I would be, a, I, you know, like a lot of my friends have, but I've never had a Why? Desi- no one's invited you? Yeah, well, that's basic. I was going to say I've never had the desire to. No one's ever invited me. I've been on yachts, but only like a, a day trip, which was still very, very nice, but not like where I'm at sea for three days. Like I know a ton of people with it with like when we're in France or whatever they're on boats, but we don't get invited. <laughs> God, I would have. I was in the pool one day, and there's like a mega yacht in the ocean. We're in the south of France, and the pool is overlooking it. And I'm looking at, I'm like talking to this woman right next to me. She's in the pool. I think she's a guest of the hotel. And she, I was like, God, look at that boat out there. She's like, which one? I was like, I don't know both of them. She's like, those are both mine. I just came in for the day. Like I just come for lunch. And then literally, I was talking to this woman. I was like, well, first of all, why do you need two boats? They were literally the size. I've never seen such big boats. Okay. They're like David Geffen status. And then I'm sitting there having lunch. And then, now, did she know who you were? Probably. Okay. I don't know. I, I think, yeah, I think she did. Okay. And I'm having lunch and the bill comes and I and I saw Jean, Jean-Pierre or whatever the guy's name is there. I just made that up. His name is whatever. Okay. Um, and I said, I said, just give me the bill. He goes, no, it was on Mrs. Kaufman. I met this woman in the pool, had a conversation for five minutes, and she paid for a three hundred dollar lunch. And by the way, never could find her again. She like disappeared into like maybe the ocean. She didn't want to invite you on the boat. She, she did not want to invite you on the boat, but she felt bad and paid for the lunch. Yeah. Because I think what your plan was to pick up the lunch and get and on then the boat. get on the boat. And guess what? I sent a bottle of champagne to the room. She kept a room there for the day, and on beautiful note, and she just disappeared. You know why? She didn't want me on no, the boat. No, I know why. She was friends with your clients that took you to the horrible Mexico trip. <laughs> and she was trying to get back at me yes. on their and behalf. Like, they I'm called gonna... her and said, you get that fucker back. Yeah, get, tease him, tease, tease him. him. Tell him he's going to party on the boat and then just disappear into the darkness yes. of the night. What if that $17 million woman wants to sell that house that you bought? Wait. Does she have a house? A list? Total... She calls you up right Actually, now. Actually, that's a lie. I would totally work with her. Okay, because she is a juicy scooper, and she's going to listen to this, and she's going to no, say, Josh, I can't believe that you said that about me. I'll be like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. It's my other friend that I sold a 17 Oh, house okay, on good. On a private plane that was sober to Correa's. Okay, good. That makes me feel better, because I need to sell this house. I've, I'm leaving my spouse. Um, I've been no, drinking. She wouldn't leave him. Trust me. He's a billionaire. Okay. He's he's uh, no longer on this earth. <laughs> and I am uh, – and he was the one that kept me sober. I've been ripping it every night. I would be like, where's the party? <laughs> I say we do a redo. I say we redo this and become BFF. We're redoing we're it. We're going to do – let's take that jet all over the U.S. We're gonna take the jet out. We're going to go – Let's just get drunk as shit. My friend who you met at the pool – in France. Mrs. Coffin, we're, we're flying out to see her. We're sorry we did this to you. We're going on the yacht. We're going on the yacht, baby. But only if you can bring my favorite comedian, Heather McDonald, with you. Because yeah, she likes to drink. Yeah, fly you out, too. God. You want to go? I want to find some rich people that like to drink. Just go to Hillcrest Country Club. I don't know if I... Well, I belong to another country club. Which one? North Ranch and Westlake, but it's... Jewish or non-Jewish? Oh, it's nothing. And you can be whatever you want to be. You can be whatever you like. Yeah. <laughs> our, our most prestigious uh, person there is Chris Harrison from The Bachelor. Oh, and okay. me. I'm second. Okay. So it's you not in it, the room and it's go, not killing it. Oh, my God. It's her. Oh my God. Yeah. It was a little bit. I performed at Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Center. And there, there was some staff that, that I gave what tickets to that were excited. With? The Heather McDonald Foundation. It's, it's very important. It's Heather's for Heather's, keeping Heather's hot for generations to come. Very we important. encourage young women who are pregnant with girls to name their daughters Heather because our name is becoming extinct. Yes. Like and, Herman. Like the Hermans should have done this 100 years ago. Yes, exactly. So or Edward. So if you're a woman who's pregnant and you – and I believe that you'll probably produce a pr- attractive daughter. Yeah, if they're ugly, send them back or do not name them Heather. Right. You want somebody anyway, to get one of them. So we're working on that. Um, that's one of my charities. Um, no, but my real, um, I mean, like, um, 
I've done I've done like a free show for Parkland when the Parkland shooting happened. I mean, I did for this. I'm wearing the Borderline shirt. That was a Thousand Oaks shooting. I did a show out in. You know, I sometimes I'll do a show and the whole amount will go to like a fire, like with the That's fires, nice. stuff like that. I'll just do stuff like that. That's you know, or someone asked me, like the people in Florida asked me. So then I was like, okay. And then, what if we switch roles right now and I ask the question? Sure, I go ahead. You. Go ahead. What's the weirdest sexual experience you've ever had? Oh God, not many, not many. Um, I went to a strip club in Mexico oh, with my husband, and I thought I was like all like going to be down with it, mm-hmm. and then we went into this little room where the girl was going to, you know, like do the, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, when I saw her like on my husband, I just like freaked the fuck out. Oh, and then the I was like, came and then she was like, "Oh no, I do it to you too." And then I was like, like, "Don't no. touch my titties." And I was like, "No!" And then my husband just like threw her like forty <laughs> bucks, and he's like, and he still talks so about you, it. You today. never had a threesome with him, then I'm assuming. Never ever would I want that kind of competition. I think no way, yeah. no way, not for me. But I love to like, I love to watch shows about it and read things about cheating and all that. I porno? just don't do you cheat. like porno. I only like like um like like light porn. How about gay porn? I love gay porn. Is that I find this that a lot of women love, like no, gay porn. I find that very it, interesting. I don't love gay porn. I love normal TV shows that Oh, have like the gay sex scene. Yes. Like the talented Mr. Ripley. Isn't that so gay and I, so hot? I love all of that. Ugh. I love it when like two guys haven't realized they're gay yet. Yeah. And then they're like yelling at each other. Right. And then they just and, start and, making yes, out. Yes. No, but they don't make out. They're like, suck my dick. Yeah. I I like Is it. Is this gonna make it? <laughs> Yes, I well, I've talked about this before because I always feel like you know you always hear how guys love girl on girl sex, you know, right. straight guys like that. But I started to realize I, I liked that gay on gay like that, <laughs> and and I've talked about it with people, and I I think I'm not the only one. I think there's a lot of straight so women a, that. Will but why like, don't I like the opposite? I don't want to watch full gay porn. But why don't I, I like the op? Why don't I like straight guys and girls having sex? Why do you like two guys? Because I like a man's Dudes. body. Right. So I like a man's body. So now there's double dicks. And right. There's, and they're always attractive. Right. So that's why I think I kind of like, like I said, I like it. They're not always tame. attractive. I was watching porn this morning. Oh, there you was know one what? of the dicks was really not no, attractive. There was, okay. There was a storyline on Scandal, the show Scandal. Mm-hmm. And one of the main guys was gay and he had a boyfriend and they were like older and they weren't hot. And I didn't like that story. Do they have sex? They like like showed like one was about to go down on the other. Ugh. This is like ABC prime time. Oh, this is another fine. question. You like, do you think stuff. like you know how like today you're like you look at like an old man or like an old man you wouldn't be attracted to him? But, like as you get older, like does like an eighty year old want to bang another eighty year old girl? Or he still wants to bang like a twenty year old. I just thought about this recently because I I know I look really young, but I'm not that young, and I'm not attracted to like people your age. <laughs> Like, if I see guys, I'm not, like, attracted to, like, I mean, I'll see, like, a 25-year-old and be like, wow, that's a good-looking guy, you know? But I think if I was suddenly single, they'd have to be, like, either really fit or, like, forty, like early 40s. Like, I would not want to be going for, like, 60 unless they were super rich. That changes everything. everything. That's a game changer. Like, being them really attractive. Like, if I'm suddenly single, it's going to be... Ju- like I, you know, I don't need someone for money, so it would have to be so rich that it'd be like life changing money. Yeah, so nice, or to it's got to be right? just like good looking, really good looking, and yeah. just kind of fun. Do you think when you're eighty, you still have sex? Yes, they're all getting venereal diseases at the retirement. It's places. true. That's true. They are, that they're that like, like they're like the hippies that have been fucking their whole lives. But it's like, how are they getting disease? Like they're not like they're these getting pe- Viagra and then they get diseases because they don't like because they're not using condoms because they're like, well, I'm but not why do they pregnant. need to use condoms? There's not like diseases. Like where's the disease started? They, someone got a disease. Someone gets herpes from someone, and then it goes around. How do you get the herpes? These are all eighty year olds. Well, I guess they could have had the herpes yeah, first. Yeah, and they could have had the herpes for the last 30 years. They have an outbreak. Interesting. And then they're all screwing <gasps> each other. I mean, I think it slows down. Have you seen my porno? You did a porno? Yeah, Million Dollar Fisting. <laughs> Wait, Frederick was a porn star. He Does was. Does anyone care about that? Not anymore. Yeah. His movie was called The Hole. <laughs> 
Was it really? Yes. Oh, my God. The hole. And what was it? It was about a hole. Wow. <laughs> and um, cut. <laughs> well, we should wrap this up. This Wait, how, how long fun. do these... Uh, well, we have stuff to cut out. Well, but how long? If we just kept going for three hours, what would you do? Like, you'd have to cut... A th- I'd probably cut it out and... Or we make it a double episode. Sometimes I do double or double or sometimes I have a... So why don't we just keep talking and make this a double? Because I have someone coming at 1230. Screw them. Who? <laughs> Fortune Feimster, she's a hilarious comedian, friend of mine. I think she will wait. <laughs> Do you have to? Well, until she comes, tell me what. How else much you more talk content about. would it take to make this a double episode? But um, I loved talking to you, and you gave me good tips. Like I didn't. What I didn't tell you to give a blow job. No, that wasn't the tip I was looking. at. I'm talking about the Calcutta Gold. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pacoima. Where is Pacoima? I don't know. It's somewhere like north. Somewhere off the fire. I don't think it exists. I think people just talk about Pacoima. What happens when you're going to the valley and you know how you see the Santa Anita Mountains? Yeah. What do you just keep going straight? Like, do you just crash into the mountain? I always wonder that. No. <laughs> like, I mean, no. I think there's – I. What? There is a big block structure in you front mean, of like you. You like Chatsworth? Like the end of Chatsworth? I don't know. When you see these mountains, like right in Mount Baldy, whatever the – you go over to the mall and you just look. There's mountains. Have you ever seen the mountains? Yeah. When you're driving like Ventura, or like uh, like an Encino, like you just keep driving. Are you eventually going to hit the rock? Like what? Happens? Yeah, I guess you would. We're gonna cut that one. Um, I- so here's my girl, Fortune. Come in. Oh, she I just joined the pot. It's just Chanel. I'm not leaving. <laughs> you have to leave. It's because I'm come gay. In, open it. It's because I'm Jewish. She's gay too. Is she Jewish? No, but she's gay. I think this is not nice. She's Fortune. Come me in leave. here. She's making me segregate because I'm Jewish. Do you know Josh Flag, the Hi. famous realtor from Million Dollar Listing? Yeah. Hi. Nice Fortune. to meet you. Fortune. Hi, Fortune. Nice to meet you. Is that he, your is that was that your real birth name? Yes, yeah, my grandmother's maiden name. Was her name Cookie? <laughs> <laughs> he said um, that I was kicking him out for you because he was gay, and I said, "Well, you're gay too." I, know. I mean. We're in this gay thing together. No, it's not because we're gay. It's because I'm Jewish. Oh. Why don't you just pull up a chair and we'll just hang out here together? I... We can you... do whatever you want. I no, we that. have to but go. She won't, let her see, go to the she bathroom. She wants it to. She wants Take me to stay. Keys. Uh, you, you know what? I'm never coming back to this table. dump again. Just, yeah, pause it right. For, you want to pause for a second? Yeah. Pause. First, I didn't think you were that delightful. That's so rude. But then you really warmed up. What, at what point did I get you? When you told me about your horrible trip to Mexico, then I oh, thought so like, the first twenty minutes of the interview, you thought I was just no. Like I think a... it was the first forty-five. Or oh a little fuck! Well, but I did appreciate you telling me about the countertops. I do appreciate your um, work ethic, and I I like that when you hate someone, you don't want to work with them again, no matter how much money you can I make. But then, said, the first but then you said, forty-five minutes. Back... What do most people think about me? Because I usually don't spend more than forty-five minutes with them. Well, you should try to spend more because then you do grow, you do grow on people. Oh. Um. I fine. Think, I didn't like you anyway, bitch. I really think you're funny. I think you're great. I love that you what you do, and I think you're lucky. You get to be in an ice cream truck. You get to have a hot husband. You get to sell houses and be funny, and you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not so bad, I guess. It's pretty great life. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Love you. You guys, everybody watch the show. Follow him. Tell him how to, they, to get to your vlog. It's the best. Go to YouTube.com slash Josh Flag. I know, very original. But trust me, watch it. It's really funny, cool stuff. And watch the Halloween episode coming in a couple days. Or Thank today. You. Whatever. Thank you. It's up now. Yeah, it's Thank up you. now. Bye.